Okay, welcome back. We're still on osteology. In the previous videos, we've covered the clavicle and the scapula. On another video, we covered the humerus. On this short video, let's take a look at the forearm. And the forearm really is composed of two bones. When you're in anatomical position, you have the radius that's lateral and you have the ulna that's medial, right? You have the head of the, you have the radial bone that's lateral. And then we have the ulna that's medial. So from the anterior view, let's look at the proximal part of the radius, which is called the head of the radius. And notice it's round contour. This rounded contour articulates with this rounded portion on the ulna called the radial notch. So the radial notch is a notch on the proximal ulna that is the perfect receiving end for the head of the radius. And it allows for this to take place. It allows for supination and pronation of the forearm. It allows for that rotational component. See how round the head of the radius is? It allows for that rotational component in the radial notch. So where's the radial notch? It's on the proximal ulna, okay? Now there's also an ulnar notch. If you look down at the distal end, there's an ulnar notch and the ulnar notch is on the radius. So the radial notch is on the ulna, the ulnar notch is on the radius. The ulnar notch is at the distal end that just receives the distal end of the ulna. It's a little groove at the distal end. Okay, let's go back to the radial head. Here's the neck of the radius. And just distal to that is a little tuberosity called the radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity is an attachment site for the biceps brachii. It's where the biceps brachii inserts. It's the insertion for the biceps brachii. If we go down a little further, this is just the shaft of the radius. And if we go down all the way to the end, let's call this the radial styloid. Instead of calling it the styloid process of the radius, Let's call it the radial styloid. If you ask this on an exam, don't put styloid process of the radius, it's just so much to write there. In most anatomy books, it's simply called the radial styloid, the radial styloid. Okay, let's take a look. Same view, anterior view. Here is the trochlear notch. Remember the trochlear notch, this depression is going to articulate with the trochlea of the distal end of the humerus. And remember the head of the radius is gonna articulate with the capitulum of the distal end of the humerus. Then we have the coronoid process, coronoid process fits into the coronoid fossa and the radial head in the radial fossa. Here's the shaft of the ulna. Now, where is the head of the ulna? The head of the radius is proximal, but the head of the ulna is distal. They're opposites. Again, the head of the radius is here, which is proximal. You would think that the head of the ulna would be up here, but it's not. It's at the distal end. Here's the head of the ulna. The proximal part of the ulna on the posterior view, that's called the olecranon or olecranon process. And when your elbow is resting on something, that's the olecranon process. Here's the shaft of the ulna. And at the distal end of the radius was the radial styloid, and all the way at the distal end of the ulna is the ulna styloid, the ulnar styloid. 
Again, the head of the radius is proximal, but the head of the ulnar is distal right here. Why, why is this landmark important, the radial styloid? This is the insertion site. The radial styloid is the insertion for a muscle called the brachioradialis. Brachioradialis. When you look at that name, brachioradialis, brachio from brachium, which is the arm, humerus, radialis to the radial bone. Brachio radialis. Okay, we'll take a break and when we come back, we will look at the hand.